How's it going everybody? Welcome to episode two of the Business Book Club. I'm Derek Lau with Ada Media Solutions. I'm here with Steve Goebel from the Goebel Group and Chuck Hanabach, uh, Realty One. And we're gonna be talking about the hard thing about hard things today. So Chuck, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your business since you're our uh you're our guest. You're oh, our first. You are the guest. You are. You are. You are this month's guest. <laughs> yes. You are our first guest on the on the program. So. Yes. Uh, so I've been in real estate uh, four years. Okay. Uh, as you guys, as Eric and you know, or Derek, excuse me, you know, uh, multiple business owner. So I've taken those life experiences and taken my personal real estate love and brought it into where I can help my clients and helping them through the process from the start to the finish, answer the questions, kind of take that stress of the process out of the pr equation and handle it behind the scene for them so it becomes more of a oh my gosh that's the worst experience in my life and make it more like wow that wasn't as painful as i thought it was going to be yeah uh, i love working with first-time home buyers a lot because they're the ones that are so misguided a lot of times because unfortunately we've got the internet <laughs> and we've, we've got HGTV out there that's giving us a... Uh, 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 Wait, you mean that that's not really how it is? Yeah, exactly. Re reality that. TV isn't reality. Exactly. Is that what you're saying, Charlie? Exactly. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So Who knew? Trying to bring it into the real scope. So that's, yeah. been, a, that's been a great joy for me in the industry, and, and it's yeah. been a lot of fun. I love those memes on the internet where it's like, Hi, I'm a part-time beekeeper, and my yeah. husband, he walks snails, and our budget is $750,000. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it yeah. is interesting to, you know, or, or even the whole aspect, you know, when people are doing the Credit Karma thing, well, my credit score is this, but did you read the small disclosure on Credit Karma that says, this will not relate to a real estate credit score? And a lot of people don't understand that, so they're yeah. looking at that aspect, and well, why? What happened? Well, there's a lot of different equations when you go for credit. You know, you go for car credit, you go for credit card credit, you go for house credit. There's all different equations that are put into that procedure to yeah. really figure out what your credit score is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a big thing is trying to teach people that. And then also people who have not built any credit, then, okay, what do we do to help you get to the step you want to be? And giving them the right tools and the right people to work through that and go from maybe a, you know, a 500 credit score up to the 680 where they have feasible funding stored away at this point because a lot of people say, oh, I'm gonna go buy a house. How much money do you have? I have $500. That's not realistic. They're buying a tiny home. They saw an HGTV. That's, there there yeah. you go. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, it, that process of trying to help people understand what's going on. And I, to me, that's the biggest joy of the whole industry. Nice. So, yeah. nice. Awesome. I also, before we get it started into the book, I also want to give a sh uh, shout out to Joel Sims. Uh, we are in the Lancaster co-working space uh, on Walnut Street behind Anita's Bakery. Uh, we're shooting in one of his conference rooms today. He's having his uh, grand opening soon. So if you're looking for a place to work in Lancaster, uh, it's a great spot. And he was nice enough to let us shoot in here. Thanks, Joel. We appreciate Thanks, it, my friend. Yeah, it's yeah. very modern. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. really is. It has a nice cutting edge to it. Yeah. So yeah. people who are liking that feel, yeah. really good vibe. Good. So about that book. So about that book, <laughs> hard thing about hard things. Uh, you know, it's it's a book by Ben Horowitz, and if if you recognize the name Ben Horowitz, he is the Horowitz of Anderson Horowitz, which is a big VC firm. Um, and if I remember correctly, he was also one of the founders of Netscape way back when, before Google, before Bing. You know, Netscape was the original browser. So, um, you know, the hard thing about hard things. Building a business when there are no easy answers. And as, as fellow business owners, as fellow entrepreneurs, um, we deal with the hard things behind the scenes more often than not, simply because we don't have some of the, uh, the, the ability sometimes to share our concerns mm -hmm. with our employees. Right. And, yeah. you know, because it's, 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 it's one of those things where we need to be trusted, we need to be, uh, we, we need to look confident on the outside. Right. And, you know, I equate it to being a duck, you know. A duck on the top of the surface looks all calm and peaceful. But they're paddling but like hell under the surface. Absolutely. <laughs> they're paddling like hell under the surface to keep going. To keep, yeah. and, and that's as business owners. Yeah. So, you know, of, of the three of us, Chuck, you are the most senior, uh, experienced business owner, not just because of age, but also the multitude of variety of businesses that you have. So share your thoughts and experience a little bit, if you would, about some of the hard things that you might have read about that you can relate to the, the real world to everyday pre everyday people. First of all, I, I, you know, I should say that you know, though I have these businesses, doesn't mean I'm a professional or I think <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've, I've scored it big. I mean, you know, I've, I've I've failed at a lot of things. I've had nights where I'm like, okay, where's the next penny coming to pay the bill? 
Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges I feel that people that go into business is you have to be willing to eat, drink, and sleep that business mm -hmm. in the beginning years. And yeah. I think there's so many people that get into business and think, I'm a business owner. <laughs> and I don't have to be there or I don't have to do this. And I, that's the false, right. the false thought process as yeah. how I look at it. Um, where I've been challenged a lot of times, uh, you know, is how to, how to make the next step. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to grow to the next level. You know, and we, you know, we all have mentors who we look at and we're like, how did they get there? What did they do? Like, how did they get the bigger audio productions going? Or, you know, you're in coaching. And for me, with the different variations of my business, how did they become the number one real estate agent? Or, you know, Derek and I have recently talked on the phone uh, about a, a friend that he has. It's really doing a different uh, process in reaching out to clients. It's like, how does he do that? How does he have that? ambition to do it the way he's doing it and it's like okay you have to look at that and then you have to start simplifying the processes down right so for me that's been the challenge sometimes and i'm also a person that i probably would relate to myself as the true entrepreneur because my brain's firing thousands of ideas and honing it in and trying to get it into control for myself mm -hmm. and i'm also a person even though i'm old um i like change Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem when it's like, okay, well, we're doing this all this way. And all of a sudden, nope, we're changing the, we're changing the, we're, we're changing the roadmap. So yeah. you can drive people a little insane uh -huh. that way as well. But my roadmap changes are because I'm seeing a different vision that I think we need to track course to. Well, and, and that's where a lot of employees don't see that same vision we do. Right. We have as, as, as owners or as entrepreneurs. And you know, I'm I'm an import to Lancaster County. I don't know if you are or not, but change is is, is, a, is a dirty word in Lancaster County. It is very dirty, and we're used to it. We thrive on it, mm -hmm. and, and that's you know, it's kind of why I'm self-employed. I'm, I'm a shitty employee. <laughs> <laughs> and, At least you're honest about it. Yeah, well, it, well, it has nothing to do with knowledge or ambition or talent. It's just that I you know I I'm, I'm more comfortable with change than most mm -hmm. people are, mm -hmm. and I'm not willing to deal with this is the way we've always done it. Yeah. And, and so many business owners and so many employees even get stuck on that concept mm -hmm. of this is how we've always done it. Correct. And then five years later, they wonder why they're out of business or that it doesn't work the way it used to. Because they, mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't read, first of all. you got to read, people. Right. And they didn't adapt to the changes that is, are, are coming right. or yeah. are taking place. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, it's hard a lot of times to get that vision across because you see a vision in one way, but sometimes amplifying what's in this thing. Right onto paper, onto screen, onto video. Onto Some, people. And onto people can be a very, very difficult task because they also have their own mindset on how things are going. Um, and it's the balancing act is how hard do you press mm -hmm. to get people to do it? And you know, I always go back to my dad. Um, my dad had a gift of being able to know what he wanted people to do and those people would do it and he didn't tell them how to do it. Like mm -hmm. he had that gift of being able to get them to get the results he was trying to find. Mm -hmm. And that's the one gift that didn't pass to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it, it is tough because you try to figure out how, okay, you see it, you know that, I mean, maybe I can look at Derek and say, I know Derek has the talent and the ability, but now how do I get him to realize that he's got that talent and ability to get to the project right. where I want it to be. You know, right. I'm kind of probably talking in circles here, but that, that's my biggest challenge a lot of times. Well, and, and sometimes as business owners, we also expect the results to be exactly how we yeah. would do it. Exactly. And yeah. as business owners, we have to let go of that mindset. We have yeah. to, you know what, somebody else best, it may not be the exact way we would have it done, Right. Mm -hmm. but we have to get comfortable with letting them start there. And then encourage them and training them and helping them grow so that within six months, within a year, their standard, you know, comes it comes closer to our standard for ourselves. Yeah. But it takes training. It takes patience. And as business owners, we sometimes lack that patience. One of the reasons, it's interesting you brought that up and you talk about the steps, is one of the reasons I ever got into business for myself is I was involved in family business. And so my father is a, was a type A personality, I would say, a very controlled factor, you know, mm -hmm. very successful business person. And I always relate it and say, okay, his step to go from A to B may have been a straight line, but my step to go from A to B may have been, I'm gonna jog over this way a little bit and then come in this way. So we have to allow our team of people under us to take their course as long as they get you to the B. I don't care really how you get me to B. 
because we have two different brains or three different brains sitting here at the table. Mm -hmm. We're all going to go across the street a different direction or a different right. process. Right. As long as we get there with the same result, we get there with the same expenditure and we, we achieve the acquired goal. That's the hardest thing I think sometimes as entrepreneurs for us to let loose. Yeah. Because we, as entrepreneurs, I think we're, we're control people. We want to control to the way that process, absolutely. how that goes, because it's our money, it's our reputation that's on the line. And so we want to try to, I want to mold you exactly how I want you. And that's, that has probably been my biggest learning curve. And as I said to you before we got started here today is when I got into real estate, it was probably the best thing for one of my other businesses is it allowed me to step away and allowed my other people to say, I have a little bit more control. Now I can make things happen a little differently and we're still getting the same result and probably better than when I was there every single day of the week. <laughs> and I walk in on a Wednesday and we go through the management meetings and I hear things and we talk about things. And that's the piece I think as CEOs we struggle with mm -hmm. because it's our bread and butter, it's our family life, it's our home or our business building that's on the line. And we get stuck sometimes in that weed yeah. of that area. Getting out of the weeds. And you know, one of the things in the book, um, that, that ben, ben talks about is when you are in the struggle, nothing is easy and nothing feels right. Uh, and that was one of the, you know, I take a lot of copious notes and that was one of the things that stood out to me even within the notes is being in that struggle, mm -hmm. trying to figure it out and then not having a sounding board or not having mm -hmm. a trusted confidant. Um, you know, and, and we have, you know, we, we all have small businesses and mm -hmm. our families involved, mm -hmm. you know, it may, maybe indirectly at least, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, you know, you know, my wife does a lot of background stuff and obviously, you know, I bring my work home and I know you guys bring your yep. work home as well right. and, and figure out, okay, while they may not be, our, our, our significant others may not be in the business officially, they're in the business okay. with us. Absolutely. And they often don't understand the struggle because, you know, my wife's not an entrepreneur. Uh, your wife's not an entrepreneur. I'm not sure if your husband is or not, um, no. but it's about just, you know, getting out of that struggle right. and finding the right people and going through that. Right. Well, it isn't fair. I mean, there's times, you know, you've said there, you've had stressful nights where you're Don't worried sleep. about making payroll mm -hmm. or someone's a client, couple clients at the same time paying you late. So like, and then who do you talk to? You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. it's not fair for me to bring that home and dump that on my wife. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, it's no. like, cause then you have her stressing about it and then you're bringing a stress level to your house. It's like sometimes the, one of the things that I did like in here is he gives you some advice on how to handle problems and yeah. advice on being real mm -hmm. and, uh, and being honest and not being fake and not BSing people and stuff like that. It's like, but at the same time, you also have to learn when to just deal with it and when it's okay to share and, uh, you know. Why, you know, I'm gonna jump in here when you're talking about that, you know, one of the things as I split off and started getting into the real estate world and people were starting to run one of the other companies, it was the fact of letting loose. And as you talk about being real and being a little bit more transparent, you know, we talk about our government being transparent. I think you do have to be transparent today mm -hmm. to a degree with your team. Mm -hmm. um, they have to know the struggles because there are sometimes I, uh, you know, as I look back, you know, sitting and talking about this, I think if I would have been a little bit more transparent about some of the struggles I was facing at, as we were growing through growing pains, they probably had the answers that I was probably trying to figure out and find. And I think as CEOs, we, we've, we've, we've come in a, uh, a free enterprise world where we should harbor it all. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't because we have the fear of, okay, if I say we're having some financial problems, am I going to lose my employee base? Are they going to start thinking, okay, it's time to jump ship? And sometimes those are the most loyal people to begin with. Right. You know, you've had some longtime employees. I've had some longtime people. And I've learned when I say, hey, guys, we had a really bad month. We've got to see what we're doing wrong. It's like, well, here's what's we're, here's what we're doing. They've sometimes they're already like started to write. They're, the they're ahead of the game. They're now. ahead of yeah. the game. Whereas as a CEO, you get stuck in that mud. Yeah. And you start to worry, yeah. and that worry can really cripple you emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, physically, to the point that you really can be your own worst enemy in it. But uh, one of the things I thought this book talked about is you can't quit. No, you yeah. can't quit. That's yeah. the big thing. No, and, and, and you know, we, we as small business owners, and you know, the, the statistic is out there that I'm sure you guys heard, 90% of small businesses fail in the first five years. Yeah. And 40% as, as of this morning, 40% of those businesses today are started by women. It was just on the news this morning. Interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah. But you know that that statistic. Uh, you know, I, I think fail is the wrong word there. I think you just gave you know a little bit of credit to it that we, you know people quit too early mm -hmm. because it is hard, mm -hmm. and failing and quitting aren't necessarily the same thing. Yeah. But people give up too too easily yep. because it is hard. Yeah. You know, and and when you, when you tell yeah. people you're small business, oh, you're a millionaire. I'm like, no. Yeah. You know, no. Chuck might be. I don't know. <laughs> I know Derek and I are. No, you know? No, no, no. So, but it's but it's about you know working through those hard things and the longevity of it. Well, I think the thing is, you know, and it, we probably all have heard this, that if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a very true statement when you look at anything we do. You know, as you guys know, I was a marathon runner. That's not easy. Mm -hmm. And it's perseverance. And that's something you do more individualized. So, but it's how do you do you want to succeed at that? It, and I think that's the drive. I think a lot of us in, as entrepreneurs, we're looking at it and saying, okay, well, What's the ultimate goal? You have a wife and family and kids. I don't have kids. I have puppies. They're my kids. <laughs> um, but you know, you, I think you also, as a CEO or a company owner, you better have rewards for yourself set there mm -hmm. as well. And I think sometimes that can get clouded and not there. Like, well, what the hell am I doing this for? You know, like, why am I working so hard? What is the outcome that you're trying to achieve? And if you don't have that written down, and I think that's a big thing, you have to write stuff down. Yeah. yeah. Too many of us get into the fact, well, it's in here. It's in here. Mm -hmm. And that can destroy what you're trying to achieve as well, I think. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, those small victories, you know, even when we're having the hard times, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we have to celebrate those small victories. Exactly. You know, yeah. what, what are my goals this year? Uh, I was born in Germany. It's my, I celebrated my 40th birthday earlier this year. One of my goals this year was to get back to Germany. I've not been back since I was nine. I'm a military, oh, wow. I'm a military kid, so okay. I'm, I'm an American citizen. Uh, but you know, I remember Germany as a kid growing up. I lived there for a number of years, and that was one of my goals this year. Um, that, that's on the back burner now because an event I had last week kind of blew up in my face. It was a great event, but financially just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to reevaluate, and so maybe that big win of visiting Germany in this year isn't going to happen, but I still, we, you know, we still need to celebrate those small wins mm -hmm. yeah. because it's those small wins along the way yeah. that remind us and keep pushing us, yeah. you know, and I, I, I've never run a marathon clearly, right? People say, hey. <laughs> but you know, I imagine from talking people who have, okay, they celebrate those miles, right? You know, those milestones, whether, the, whether it's the first five miles and then every five miles mm -hmm. and then after 20, it's every mile, mm -hmm. you know, from, from everybody has their own different right. way of measuring right. that. Right. But you had a plan. Right. I'm going to celebrate here. I'm going to celebrate here. These are the milestone markers. Mm -hmm. And as small business owners, we need to remember that yep. and, and not be ashamed or not be afraid right. to, to, even during the hard times, to have those celebrations. Yeah. Those but you, and, you know, I'm going to really uh, give a, a, I don't know, a high five or something to Derek. I don't know how you want to refer to it. But you know, one of the things I think you have to do is you have to make sure that what you're doing as hard as it is, you still have fun, and I think you are so <laughs> good. I, you know, I, I follow, you know, I follow you on Facebook and your 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 your, your experiences and just the fun that you have. Yeah. And I know those jobs that you're out there videoing are not going perfect. There's there's got to be there's got to be some along the way. The behind but, the scenes oh, for these, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, you know, the so. behind the yeah. scenes. But I think the fact that you're not afraid to laugh at yourself. Yeah. And I think that as business owners we have to be willing to say i just really screwed up right. i really made an ass out of myself or whatever and own it yeah and you do a good job at it i'm not saying you're making an ass out of yourself i don't want to <laughs> but, but thanks to the, the, the fact that you have fun you 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 know it's really i remember in the winter months there was something that you were doing and you're outside of the outside with the truck and the, things were blowing all over the place and yet you still left us see that and mm -hmm. I think from the realism and how business has evolved over the years, I think that's important too. Yeah. And having fun with what you do. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we try to keep it real. I mean, if you watch us on social media or watch us online, you know, that's one thing I you know, kind of proud or something yeah. I pride myself in is just being honest, being right. real. But when it comes to the book, like I said, it's just he talks about being real right. with your staff and with your employees right. mm -hmm. or yeah. if you're having problems, be transparent. Yeah. Don't don't sugarcoat it. Don't sugarcoat it. Yeah. Don't bring people in one at a time and talk to this person and talk to that person. Yeah. 
read that which, which uh, 65 six, page 65 yep. had I been thinking more clearly I would have realized that it didn't make sense for me to be the only one to worry about the company's problems yeah, yeah so yeah you, you, you let people know and I know there was one part we talked about you know don't have a conversation with one person separately and have a conversation with this person separately if you're having a problem with the three of them bring them together bring yeah. them all in the room yeah. because when you do it separately people can be manipulative and they can sugarcoat their part of the story and right. things out you get the people in the room together you say hey look you know, like you were talking about Tim Rooney. Tim Rooney used to call it the, the Dutch uncle. Mm -hmm. Just like, hey, I gotta be the Dutch uncle. I gotta keep it real for a yeah. minute. You mm -hmm. know, this is the problem. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You probably did something wrong. You probably did something wrong. You just both admit you're wrong. I I may have had faults in this. This is right. what I did wrong. How are we gonna fix this? Yep. You know, what are we gonna do to overcome the you know adversity or the challenges that we're facing? Yeah. I, do, and, and, I do it every Wednesday in my meetings. I'm yeah. like, I'm the reason this isn't done. Right. You, have to, you know, I don't sit there and say, well, you didn't get this part. No, I missed something. I missed getting this done for you guys. So give me an extra day or two. I'll yeah. get it finished up right. for you. But that's the big thing. And, and one of the things I work with my clients on is, you know, the saying, a problem ignored is not a problem solved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're so easy to, to ignore problems because dealing with them is hard sometimes. Yeah. yeah. We're going to hurt somebody's feelings or we have to expose ourselves and be a little more vulnerable right. with yeah. ourselves. And as guys, it's hard to be vulnerable sometimes, right. you know, especially compounded with business owners and CEOs because we're expected to have all the answers sometimes, right. mm -hmm. which well, we clearly don't have all the well, answers. Well, it's your job to work with business owners and CEOs, so how much of this do you see where people aren't being transparent? Like, is that a major problem that you see in like a lot of companies when they are having issues? Oh, yeah. People just need to be more real and just be well, more transparent with each other? No, absolutely they do, and that's that's why they hire me. So if you're having problems with that, hi, I'm Steve, <laughs> I'm your friend. Um, but no, because it is hard because you know, a lot of times, especially in family businesses, yeah. and in Lancaster County, there's a lot of family businesses, but family businesses are even harder than other businesses because you have the family dynamics yeah. that come into play yeah. that, you know, long-time employees may understand a little bit, but the newer employees aren't going to understand those family dynamics. Mm -hmm. And what makes sense financially yeah. doesn't make sense in the family. And it's hard to separate those two right. when you have that. Uh, and that's actually, you know, I, I, I lost my job when my daughter was 12 days old because mm -hmm. I was a general manager of a family business. Uh, part two, you know, one half of the business being run by the brother-in-law was losing a ton of money. I was a new general manager. I made the recommendation, let's get rid of the brother-in-law. Well, who do you think they got rid of? Me, <laughs> not the brother-in-law. Yeah. Even though it made the most sense financially. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's that's one of the challenges um, is, is that vulnerability, being honest and open. Yeah. But also... A lot of companies that I see, small businesses, even large companies where I work with smaller teams, you know, some people just don't care. Wait, well, I think you talked about in the book, ignoring the problem. You can't just ignore yeah. the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You have to exactly. face it head yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. You have to. You can't be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah. like, you know, I I remember reading where it said, you know, when it's time to lay people off, you can't wait. It's the it's actually the time when you make the decision to the time you do it is the most critical time. Right. That window, you have mm -hmm. got to make that window short because the more you delay that, the more painful it is for yourself even yeah you know and, and when you talk about family business dynamics it's very true and I think that also can cloud a business sometimes in what you can do because a lot of employees won't put out their fourth be, their fourth of effort because where am I going to go this there's a ceiling right I'm only can go so far in, in your case that you were talking about you know so from that end it can be tough but I you know going back to some talking about transparency um, I think I, I don't know if you guys do this or not with your businesses, but I think you do have to have one individual in your business who you feel you can be pretty 100% transparent, like, yeah. down to the, the very mm -hmm. last penny, so that there is something out there. Mm -hmm. There's another opportunity for them to give you some ideas because as CEOs, we don't always have the sounding board. You know, you, you have other business people that we're sitting here as business people talking about this thing. Um, However, it's not always that you have it inside and you have to have that one person. There also has to be somebody that can take over. And that's mm -hmm. a lot of other things I think that people don't think about is what happens if something happens to me when I walk out of here? Right. Yeah. What is the livelihood for the people who you've now put into your team, put into your culture, and how that's going to happen? So I think that transparent point has to be really down to somebody. Yeah. And, and one thing, you know, one, on page 93 in the book, and I take you know, to Kobe's notes on page 93. Take care of the people, the products, and the profits in that order. Mm -hmm. And everything we do in business, we have to take care of our people. And Richard Branson has said the same thing. You know, there's a quote out there. He has, train the, er, train the people well enough where they want to leave or where, where they can leave. 
right. pay them enough where they don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. And you, you take care of your people on the front lines and they take care of your customers. It's a simple concept, mm -hmm. but it's challenging to execute because of everything that goes on, you know, the, the other expenditures that a lot of employees don't even see. I, and I, I think that's gotten a little tougher even from the take care of your people in today's employment market mm -hmm. is because, you know, we're dealing with the electronic devices that are at work. We're dealing with the way people are, you know, you go to the stores and getting customer service is tough. So I think a lot of businesses are like, well, how much do I want to take care of people because it's costing me on the back end. I might have to hire two people for the job one person has to do. So that I think sometimes can be tough mm -hmm. from that aspect of taking care of people. And it kind of goes back to you. I remember working with a gentleman years ago, um, Phil Gascoigne, who was a uh, business coach. And I remember him talking about you know the way our, our pyramid was. And our pyramid at the time had been completely opposite the way it should be and putting the people at the top and the customer at the very bottom. And it was interesting when we went through that whole, uh, whole business exercise, I'm like, wow. And then when we did, we went through a whole exercise and we flipped it and it was like, the people will bring you the customer. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's very true when you start to think about that. We just did this exercise at one of the companies I have just recently. We talked about the pay scales and how do we have to change those pay scales in, in today's climate. And it was really interesting what kind of happened when we gave these people the additional funding to make their lives better what started to happen on the outside mm -hmm. you know now there's been challenges with that there's nothing that you do i feel that isn't <laughs> going to come along with challenges and problems. the hard thing about hard things exactly. what we're talking about you right know, <laughs> and, and, and and trying to be fair about it and then you have the you know unfortunately there's people who when you you in our particular case at this one company we raised our entry wage and people were like well i didn't start at that wage when i started but yeah, but we're this is all new platforms. You know, we're giving you different programs. We're trying to escalate those things, and it's tough. I think for CEOs, I know for myself, I've struggled with this over the years. And one of the businesses is, you're trying to do all these nice things for the people, mm -hmm. and the people don't get involved, and that sometimes can be tough. And in my one industry, is a there's a big cultural difference in the type of employees that we have, and so you have to learn what or how does that culture function mm -hmm. in the society? And you have to adapt to that. And that's, I think, the biggest piece too, because what I might do and how you might be, mm -hmm. I've got to figure out how to get to there. Right. You know, and um, I, I remember a couple of years ago reading a book also in regards to, you know, do you talk about people? It's what do you want to do with your life? So Derek, you come in for a job interview and depending on what you're coming in for, like what, what's your ultimate goal in life? Um, how can I help you get there? And it comes mm -hmm. kind of comes back to what you said with Branson is, you know, it's you want to train them to get be good, but pay them enough that they don't want to leave. However, right. at the same time, you want to help him get to what his goal is. So if his goal is I want to be an aero pilot or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be, how can I help him get there through the means that I have to push him along to the next step? And right. Welcome him out the door. So many business owners get like, what do you mean you're leaving? You know, mm -hmm. no. We, hey, we need you. <laughs> Good luck. You know, yeah, yeah. thank you for the time you gave me. Good yeah. luck. I wish you the best. Mm -hmm. There's no hard feelings in this world. Because, because, because somebody wants to be an airline pilot, and they're starting out, you know, in in in, in, a, in a new business, first time job. You know, they got to do training. They got to yep. do stuff. Hey, yes. If you provide them that opportunity that encourages them to chase their dream, mm -hmm. they're going to work hard. They're going to be appreciative while they're with you. And that's a hard part for business owners yes. too, because it's like, I'm training you to do this job. I'm training you to be a videographer and then you decide to go out and do your own thing. Right. And it's like, yeah, okay, that just screwed me, so to speak. Right. But it, and I, I think it's all a psychological game for us too. Yeah. In our heads, we have to think about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I sit here and talk about it. It's not been easy <laughs> because I know that I get stuck in the, the oh my God, what am I going to do? We, we all get stuck yeah. there. And that's, that, that's yeah. the thing about entrepreneurship and business ownership is we all get stuck there sometimes. Uh, and, and we need the people, you know, we need trusted advisors, mm -hmm. we need coaches, we need family, we need friends, we need those employees that we can trust mm -hmm. to help pull us back out of the weeds. Right. Because we don't belong in the weeds more often than not. That's what right. we have teams right. for. Right. right. But we have to get over that. And it starts with us as individuals. And it's easier said than done. And you guys know this. Well, I think the other comment that was interesting in the book is you can't manage by the numbers. <laughs> you know, you, you page Page 133. Uh, management purely by numbers is sort of like painting by numbers. Yeah, you it's strictly for amateurs. You can't manage by that, and you can't. I, I don't think you can always manage it by the checkbook either. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
you you know, I, I remember meeting a guy probably about two years ago and he was super successful in my words of successful. And I, he said, I just love what I do. I don't care about the profit. And I was like, wow. You know, in my head, I'm thinking about that. And it's like, okay, when you do get away from balancing the checkbook mm -hmm. and what the bottom line is, and you start to really thrive and enjoy what you're doing, and you do a damn good job at this, um, I think it, it inherently happens. Mm -hmm. The success just kind of naturally happens because people see that you're not worrying about the stress of the number. Like, what's how much money is in my checkbook or how much do I have to... I think that as long as you're responsible and not going crazy with it... Right. But to sit there and say, okay, well, we, we have to have this much or we have to do this much. or we, you know, I think sometimes that gets in the clouded way of the, our own successes. It does. And that's, that's partly, you know, because of the society we live in. Everything's so mm -hmm. short term. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, years ago, businesses planned five, ten years out. They played the long game. Mm -hmm. Now the long game on Wall Street is 90 days. Yes, small businesses don't have the capacity to run their business 90 days at a time. Mm -hmm. We need to play that long game mm -hmm. to ensure our survival. And even then it's not insured. We have to keep up with the short term. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we do focus on the numbers and, and get in, in, get heavily involved in the weeds with the numbers, mm -hmm. it doesn't allow us to see the bigger picture of our people, of the vision, of the other opportunities. Now we have to we have to be aware of the numbers. You can't, you know, we are not suggesting you just ignore the numbers exactly, exactly okay? But the numbers aren't everything. Right, and I, I think the, the another thing that I, I know I've said to a lot of people in our teams is you don't run in a football game 100 yards. Mm -hmm. You go 10 yards at a time. So if you have what these goals are, you know, you have the long-term goal, but if you shorten them down into the smaller mm -hmm. goals as you're talking about and stuff, it, I think it makes the clarity of the project or the outcome of what your goal is much clearer for your team of people mm -hmm. within your business. You could give them, here's the site, but give them the roadmap. I think a lot of times as business owners, we just say, well, well we want to, you know, maybe if I'm in production, I want to have 500 units by the end of the week. Well, how the heck are we getting there, sir? Yeah. Or ma'am, whoever's in charge of the business. I think you have to make sure that there's a clear picture or a clear roadmap mm -hmm. on how you see that. It's not cut in stone. But it's a guide point, you know. And yeah, that's important. what they say at page one forty-five. Um, yeah. Sometimes an organization doesn't need a solution, right? It just clarity. needs clarity. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, and and knowing why you're doing, you know, the why. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think that's really important, and it, it's it's not easy. And I would say to everybody out there, you're going to fail. <laughs> I don't mean that in a rude way, but you're going to fail, and you're going to be hard on yourself. But I think the thing is, to, you know, pick up your bootstraps. And that's probably a little slang term, but pick up your bootstraps and just push forward, perseverance. Mm -hmm. I mean, just saying, hey, I, I, I can't give up. I've got to figure this out. I've got to keep pushing forward and, and it'll happen. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the, it's, you have to have drive. Yeah. You have to have drive. You can't be in bed till nine or 10 o'clock in the morning and then going for lunch and then taking off at four o'clock or whatever. Yes, you might have a day like that here and there, but the people who get into that habit of doing that start to suffer for themselves. And that's why I say a lot of young people getting into business, they have a wrong mentality of what business ownership is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and another, another uh, note that I took, everybody learns to be a CEO by being a CEO. Yeah. You know, there's roadmaps, there's guidance, and we have people around us, but every business is different, even within mm -hmm. some industries, because yeah. the people involved are different. Yep. Yeah. And until you get out there and do it, mm -hmm. yeah. and even then, you yeah. know, we don't know what to expect. Well, and, I tell people this, I started a business um, with a partner from film school, we graduated together, and we were so naive. We knew how to make videos, but we knew nothing at all about running a business. We went and incorporated, and we were literally so naive. We were like, we're incorporated now. Our phone's <laughs> gonna start ringing. You know, like, we're on some list now, and you know, we're just gonna start getting business, because we went and incorporated, yeah. we did it, yeah! We're incorporated, and then we look at the phone, and we're like, so, <laughs> where's that first? Where's yeah, that phone yeah, call? Yeah. Where's that first customer yeah. come from? And and the the, the journey, uh, mm -hmm. you know, go along. Ideally, uh, or I'm sorry, everybody learns to be CEO, but being a CEO, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah you, you just kind of learn it from experience. Yeah, and, and we, we we've all made mistakes, and we should we could do Absolutely. a whole video on just the mistakes. You know, my yeah. event last week, I, I mentioned, you know, yeah. everything about the event was amazing right. except the financial outcome, and you know, it was a very expensive lesson that I learned. Yeah. Uh, you don't worry about the numbers. You just 
we're worrying about being passionate about it. <laughs> yes, I'm definitely but, passionate about it. Yeah, but, but well, you know what you talk about that you say, okay, well, you know, it was a financial, you know, maybe I don't want to use the financial train wreck, but one it, thing, no, it was a financial okay, train wreck. That's, but, that's but, accurate. But, but okay, but let's, let's, let's think about the terminology you just used there to talk about this experience. Mm -hmm. The event was a success. Yes. You started out, the event was a success. Mm -hmm. So your goal was reached. Yes. Okay, now it's when we go to redo. One of my goals was reached. Right, right. <laughs> but, but let's, let's think about it. If the, if the event sucked and it was a financial train wreck, what's it going to be like to do it next year right. or the next time? Right. So now you know the event was a success. You've had great feedback from the attendees. Mm -hmm. How do I now change that roadmap for the financial side so that it's not only just a successful event, but it is a financial successful event. Yeah. So, but the big piece to me, as you talked about this today, is the event was a success. Right. You started out with the event was a success. Yeah. So to me, whether it was a financial train wreck, I'm still stuck on it. I may want to come to that. I'm not going to lie. I'm still gun shy from the financial side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. No, no, no. no. But, but the thing about it is you know that the whole thing wasn't right a failure right and that's the big takeaway and i think that some business owners or ceos say we're never going to do that again we made no money mm -hmm. okay let's break it down into pieces let's pull it apart what part of it did we not mm -hmm. what could we have done better and i think a lot of businesses i'm i fail at this at times too is what's your wrap up to anything you've done do you pull it apart and say okay what did yeah. we really excel at here yeah. yeah what did we suck at here yeah how could we have changed it here and then having that you know i i always call it in our office do we have the bible of the event you know here's what i would do mm -hmm. here's how i would change you know i remember years ago when we used to have company functions at the one company and you know we do this to this we put all these games together and have everybody out and like okay what did people really enjoy doing and what did people not even pertain participate right. in Let's pull that out and let's replace it mm -hmm. with something else. And that's kind of what I would say from you because your big thing you keep starting is it was a successful event. And I, think that, I think to me, that's going to sell. Hmm. And people who were at what they, in mind, in their mindset, know as a successful event, they'd have no idea that you failed miserably financially in it. Hopefully they watch this and find out that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the thing about, I think my takeaway would be though mm -hmm. that is if I hear people like, you know, Derek said, hey, that event last week was really good when we first walked in the room here. It's like, okay, what event? Now I know what this event is. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on my radar for next year or when the next time you do it that I might want to be a part of that. So now what was a financial train wreck may not be as bad of a train wreck. It might be a little bit of a train wreck right. financially, but it may not be as bad because the event of all the people that were there, 150, I think you said? Uh, about buck 80. Okay, buck 80. Those 180 people, if they all walk away and say that was a successful event, those 180 people talk about your business. Yeah. They talk about the success of that event, what they got out of it. They're not worried about how much money you may have lost. Right. And I think that that piece, when you say don't talk, count numbers, mm -hmm. I think that's the big takeaway there is you can't count the numbers because you're not going to always be profitable at everything you do. Right. You have to take what the success was. Yeah, and you have to do And you know, one of the things in the book, you know, focus on where you're going rather than on what you hope to avoid. Yep. As you know, I'm still gun shy. It's, it's, it's only a week old. I'm still gun shy about it. Mm -hmm. I saw some financial obligations that I'm going to be meeting here soon. Uh, but and you're not going to Germany. Not this year. Not this year. We'll take you to the leader conference. <laughs> <It's like> <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, yeah, it, like you said, you have to focus on where you're going yeah. and yeah. what you're hoping to avoid. And that, that different perspective is helpful. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, but we, ha you know, we, we we do get caught up sometimes as business owners, as CEOs, on the bad stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, I'm still gun shot, I'm not gonna lie. And it's 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 there. Mm -hmm. But it's you know, real. talk talk. Yeah, you know. And another thing, um, if you don't like choosing between horrible and cataclysmic, don't become CEO. Yeah, I had to make a couple choices that, you know, mm -hmm. it was terrible and more terrible and. You know, you, you have to make those choices sometimes as a CEO, whether it's event related, whether it's people related, whether it's, you know, accounts payable, accounts receivable, you know, the, the, you know losing sleep at night. There's a reason you said earlier, if, if this was easy, everybody would do it. And it's certainly not. And I probably say that every, I think every CEO has gone to the point where they think they're going bankrupt. <laughs> and, you know, I, but I think that that's the success mm -hmm. yeah, of the, and I, I think those are the businesses that become. I remember, you know, when the, when the economy tanked in 2009, I didn't act quick enough. 
and scale certain things back. So we kept running at 100 miles an hour. You know, then by 2013, I was like, oh shoot, what's going to happen? Worrying about things, you know, what I was doing and then recoursing and going forward. I think you become stronger. Every time you do have those major mm -hmm. setbacks, yeah. Yeah. your brain shifts. We all get caught up in our own worlds. Right. We all do. Um, but your brain shifts and you think of different things. You're like, okay, how can I do this? How can I change this? And then you almost really catapult yourself, I think, to the next level. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to hit some roadblocks in that one and you're going to feel like you're going backwards again. Mm -hmm. And then something changes and you catapult again. That would be my yeah. experience in this. As long as you don't quit. We talked well, about it earlier. Exactly. You, you can't, can't quit. quit. You right. can't. Well, unless you're actually dying or closing your business. Yeah, well, and it's a roller coaster. I mean, it's got its ups and downs. Sometimes you feel like you're on top of the world and sometimes right. you feel like you're in the darkest place. And it's sometimes when you get in that dark place and things are rough you just think back to the last time you were in that dark place you're yep. like you know what i got through this yep. before yep get out of your head get out of your own way and that's the key and mm -hmm. get out put of the your blinders way. on and just freaking go. do what you got to do mm -hmm. and go you know just, I, just go. I think the other thing that you, I, and I say this to a lot of people that have come working for me in years ago that were like, well, I'd like to do what you're doing or I'd like to do this position in the company. And I'd say, you really could do it. You have the potential to do this job. Mm -hmm. And they would start getting involved in a job and they would come and talk to me. And I remember specifically uh, two young men that came and worked for me. And one time we were in doing something at a, a facility for, through the other business and they talked about investing. And they would say, yeah, well, when my bank account gets to $2,500, I go and spend it all. I'm like, well, that's, hey, that's the number <laughs> one. That's, that's not getting where you want to go. Yeah. But then the other gentleman wants to become a salesperson. And I remember saying, here, you can, you, know, you can do this job. You're a people person. You love to talk to people. Let's figure this out. You can't let your outside peers pull you down. Yes. There's people who, excuse me, there are people who want to see you fail. So they're going to talk you out of your, mm -hmm. your drive. They're going to say you can't work. It, you have to make sure that though you hear the outside noise, mm -hmm. you've got to stay focused in your own beliefs and you have to have your own convictions that you can get there and believe in yourself. You know, it's, it's all about you. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to make them your enemies. You don't have to befriend or defriend them or whatever mm -hmm. you want to use the word. You just stay focused in and I know that you can do this if you have the passion you can get to where you want to be. And you do have to surround yourself with the right number, with the right people too. Yeah, you do. There's no doubt about it, you know, because there's people, uh, one of my buddies, uh, Dave Gambrell, um, he's a brilliant marketer, he's a buddy of mine. You know, he, he introduced me to the idea of crab insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put out a bunch of crabs in a bucket and one starts climbing out, what happens to that one climbing out? The other ones pull him back in. Mm -hmm. Because instinctively, and, and humans are like this as well, we want to see people succeed, mm -hmm. but if we see our friends succeed and we're not, yep. instinctively we want to pull them back, or go you know, or, or or prevent them from going. And you know, it's not out of, out of spite. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times it's not out of spite or they're not bad people. But we need to surround ourselves with the right people mm -hmm. who can encourage us and provide us mm -hmm. with that mental push when we're close to giving up, when we're close to quitting, mm -hmm. or we're in those dark places that as entrepreneurs we get to sometimes. Right, well you see a lot of that like you're talking about, like, you know, we, we talk about schooling and inner city kids, mm -hmm. and you know, they're trying to get out of that whole element. That's a real analogy to me, it's like it's the same thing, you know, it's, it's hard to leave that type of, so right. you have to have that drive. I think the other thing in, in, as business owners and CEOs, we have, no, you can't be afraid to talk to your competitor. Mm -hmm. You can learn so much from your competitor that's in the business and still be friends and be the best of friends and still have, you know, if it's two people, if I was in videography and, and you know, Derek mm -hmm. is too, um, we can share, we can learn from each other. And I think that's the biggest collaboration I know in one of my other businesses that I have is they don't talk. Right. It's a competitive market the whole way around. In my real estate career, you know, it's so nice to be able to talk to different agents and, you know, Derek and I talked about the dealer, you know, uh, you know, he's phenomenal. Shout out to the dealer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, being able to communicate to people in your industry, what are they doing? What's worked for them? You can learn from those people. And I think that CEOs have to allow that to happen. 
you know, I, I, when you went to Vegas here last week, was that part business? Yeah, that is, uh, it's the largest video production convention in the world. It's called uh, NAB, N-A-B, North American Association of Broadcasters. Okay. And that's when all the big camera companies, Sony, Canon, Panasonic, they announce their new line of cameras that are right. coming out for the year, all the new lights come out. It's it's the biggest conference in the world. For video so production. you obviously were not the only videographer there. No. Okay. So no, but, and you obviously talk to other ones. Oh yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. In, in your industry, you have to be willing to share. You have to be willing to talk about what your successes are. And you have to be willing to say it failed for me because it may not have failed for me in the video world. If, if we were in similar businesses, it may have failed for him. And I might say, well, did you try this? Right. And help. And they, they, these businesses can be two blocks away from each other. Mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to help because if you help people, Mm -hmm. ultimately they're going to be helping you. Right. And that's the biggest thing I think CEOs get stuck in their head is, oh, I can't help my competition. You've got to help your competition. Well, and part of it as an entrepreneur or CEO is embracing, it's the abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there, there's a number of individuals in the coaching world like I am. There's a number of individuals in the training world right. like I am. I'm friends with quite a bit of them. Others I don't know. It's just, you know, they don't know them all. Yep. But they're, they're, we can learn something from everybody. Sometimes it's learning what not to do. Mm -hmm. Or if it worked here, okay, how can I utilize that to make it work for me? Or how can I tweak it to make it better? Um, if you think about many of the products we have today, it's because somebody saw an idea yeah. and took it and made it better. Right. You know, and I'm not, I'm not the smartest person in this room here. You know, I'm usually, I'm usually so the it must be Derek. Derek. <laughs> I would not claim to be the smartest person in the room. Maybe when it comes to video stuff, that's about it. Um, but we have to, we have to be willing to, to embrace that learning, and embrace yep. those opportunities with the abundance mindset. Yeah. Because there's plenty of work out there for everybody. Yep. And you know, the focus by so many business, like you said, is I want that piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. Well, you can have that small piece. Let's all make the pie bigger yep. for everybody. It's, and, it's, and, and, and everybody wins. And I, I agree, I, you know, in the real estate industry that I, you know, that I sit in now, you know, I see it being very competitive at certain times in the way that things have happened. And I, I, in our agency, I've tried to incorporate the fact that let's help each other. Like what's working for me? Mm -hmm. Let's share the ideas because we're helping each other. Right. And you know, when you really come down to the whole reason we're here on earth, so to speak, is to help each other. Right. And I, you know, not to get into a religious conversation, but I mean, that's really what happens mm -hmm. because you come in with zero and you go out with zero. It's right. the journey in between that makes the big difference. Mm -hmm. So am I helping people or am I just saying, screw you, I'm not going to help you because it's all about me. Right. You know, so I think that that's a thing that you have to be willing to do. You have to be able to pick up the phone when someone calls and says, hey, I'm having a problem. Can you help me out? Right. Whether they're your business enemy, so to speak, mm -hmm. whether or not, it's, it's all about helping. It will come around and help you some way, somehow. You may not know it now, you may not know it next week, next month, next year, but somewhere along the line, that's gonna come back to you. Right, so. absolutely. And, and, and even if we don't see the tangible results, exactly. we know, okay, we're here to serve others. We're here to yep. help other people. Um, so one of the last things I wanna share, you know, the hard thing about hard things. One of the last things on page 275 that uh, Ben shares, the most important lesson in entrepreneurship, embrace the struggle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even with all the advice and hindsight in the world, hard things will continue to be hard. That's Entrepreneurship true. is not getting easier. No. Being a CEO is not getting easier. There's so many more challenges. We just have to continue to learn and adapt and embrace that struggle because it's not going away. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I think CEOs today are faced with even more challenges than we were 10 years ago. I believe it. You know, we, we've got a very low unemployment rate right now. Mm -hmm. We, you know, right now there's been this whole big thing about the millennials and, you know, <laughs> I, I, it, it's, it's that challenge. If it, if it truly is a millennial issue, how do it's we... It's not a millennial it? issue. No, I mean, it's not. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that, that's the big, the big thing, you know. But you, I think also, too, is don't get stuck in the day you started your business. You know, video or, you know, just Derek does a video and he says, tell a better story with video or through mm -hmm. video. And I know in real estate, we've started to do this, you know, in my world, you know, we were emailing and then you were texting. Well, you know, I've tried this in the past month where I might text you and you don't respond. But if I do a short video like, hey, this is Chuck with Realty One Group. You were interested in this home. I'd like to help you out with that. 
I have found instantaneous success with that aspect. Mm -hmm. So you know, you have to be willing to change and think about your business as it grows and as things come out there that are changing. If you are stuck mm -hmm. right here, you're not going nowhere. Yeah. So that's absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's harder. Your closing thoughts, sir. My closing thoughts. Um, He's overwhelmed. He's a, he's a CEO. He's overwhelmed. <laughs> no, there's just there's a lot of there's a lot of good takeaways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I am at a loss of words. I wasn't expecting you to ask me for closing thoughts. Um, <laughs> read read this is this read, read the book. That's my closing thoughts. Read the book. The hard thing about hard things. It's, it's got some good insight. It, it really does. It's, it's a phenomenal book. Can't recommend it enough. Again, especially this. The it, it addresses the, the the psychological side of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. that oh, yeah. doesn't get talked about quite a bit. That we really have to get out of the the, the mindset that we can't talk about. We have to get out of our own way. Yes, we have to get out of our own way. Really. So, Chuck, thanks for being here with yep, us. Man. Thank you. Great, great, great to be here. Time. Thanks. Great Chuck. to see you, buddy. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Stay tuned for our uh, next episode. We'll let you know what the next book is and when it's coming out. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Cool. Awesome to you. you. All right. Good conversation. I figured Shut that was like on. 45 minutes. Yeah, it was time yeah, to whack yeah, that up. Yeah, we were kind of, yeah. 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 That was a good conversation. Get a picture of you guys here. Portion right All right. And boom. Wait, grab the book now, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the book. And uh, hold it a little bit more that way. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. Good deal. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'll so do a little sprinkle on social media to prime people that will know it's coming out soon. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. And post yeah, it on share, LinkedIn. Yeah. Share that video with both of us. Yeah. And I mean, I'll put it on my Facebook. Yep. I can put it up on mine. Yeah. Man. Okay. Now you. Did she? What logo? You use a real team one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Realty one. Yeah. Can I just? You have a, I can just pull that off your website, or can you send that to me? I can send it to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And you have my logo from doing. Yeah, because I think you go into my website, it might be tough. You pick. I don't know. You. I. You it depends the resolution. It depends how pretty big I need to make it on screen. It's, I think it's pretty hot. Okay. I can probably get it from your website. Yeah, okay. Just go ahead and do and it. If it if it doesn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Chuck, up, Chuck Connor by team. Okay. Chuck Con. Cool. How many? So are you a broker? No, not yet. Okay, so you still have to do all your deals through a broker. Yeah, I okay. work for a broker. Okay, so, so you have your own team. I have my team. Okay, it so you feed them leads and you... Yeah, okay. I pay for them for leads, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So cool. uh, we do it that way. I don't yes. know if I want to have my own brokerage. 